So they own your likeness and everything else. So we did our contract. We let our likeness was owned for the term of the contract. Right. And then it became ours again. And a little different with us. We were already an established talent. Right. Before even going up there. So even if they would have wanted to try, there's not a judge in the land that's going to say, well, you, you guys can't use road doors anymore because you had a contract with them. No. What was your first meeting like with Vince? Uh, we actually went to Vince's house. It was Hawk and I and Ellering went to Vince's house, and uh, we were just negotiating with Jim Crockett with a guaranteed contract. So nobody had guaranteed contracts at the time, so we were going to be the first ones, besides Flair, that had a guaranteed contract with the NWA. So we go to Vince's mansion out there in, uh, I think it's in Stamford, Connecticut. Yeah. And uh, we go to the office. We went to the house first, sat there, and it was kind of funny in a way because... Vince got up to leave the meeting at one time, but he left all Piper's and Hogan's merchandising numbers. They're sitting right on there in the printout. <laughs> like, we're not going to look, right? He goes, yeah, look, you got merchandise stuff here. Here's numbers right here. Of course, we looked. Baiting the hook. So we saw that, but we went to Vince and listen, Vince, here's our guarantee contract. Can you match that? We're going to do a guarantee. And he says, well, at the time, we don't do guarantee contracts. We give you opportunity." I said, well, I can't pay bills on opportunity. Right. So if you have a guaranteed contract, we would do it. Otherwise, we're probably just going to stay with the AWA. And that's what we did. But going in Vince's house, I mean, it was actually kind of an interesting thing. I mean, above his fireplace mantle is this, like, big, like, five foot by eight foot painting of Vince in one of those green, total green suits and everything like that. And, of course, I, Hawk and I were jabbing with him a little bit about the painting on the wall and... You know, we actually had a great meeting with him. You know, he had a chi- like an Oriental chef that made us some really like, authentic like chicken fried rice and all that kind of stuff. It was actually really good. We had a nice meeting, and then we went to the office, looked around the office, but then we decided to stay with the NWA. Right? Was he down to earth, or did did he seem uh, did he seem put off that you guys turned down his deal? I, I think so. He played it off like you didn't care, but I think he really did care. Right? Because you probably at the time were probably the only person. We were, only one, we were the only one that didn't jump right. to go there at one time, you know? Right. Do you think he would, come, do you think he would uh, hold that against you in the future? Mm, I don't think, you know, I like to think that he wouldn't hold it against us. But I'll tell you what, one way I know he did. He knew what we were making and what we needed to make and what we deserved to make by the time we came in there as a team. And he pulled the old, oh, well, you're a team, so I can't pay you what, like, a single guy would be paying. i got to split it up because there's two of you. And I was thinking to myself, that's crap because we're selling <laughs> a lot of merchandise. Right. You're selling hundreds of millions of dollars of merchandise of us. Come on, you know. So he says, okay. I said, well, as long as you make what we were making when we were singles, and in the first year, we made hundred grand less hmm. than what he shook hands on. We said, hey, man, you said we were going to make it. I'll make it up to you the second year. It was a hundred grand less again, so now we're short about two hundred grand each, working for Vince. Right. So that's where Hawks start getting really pissy and saying, you know, screw Vince. If I want to go party and I want to go drink, I'm going to go party and drink. This gr- I'm a grown ass man. He goes, Vince is screwing us on pay. I'm going to go do this. Were people in the office trying to turn the screws on Hawk and keep him on the straight and narrow? Well, I was trying to because he's my partner, man. Right. I was trying to keep him on a straight and narrow, you know, but. But yeah, they, they tested him a lot and they came and told him he pissed dirty a couple of times, which we both, we both knew he wasn't dirty. Right. And Hawk said, test me again. I'll tell you right now, I'm not dirty. I can promise you I'm not dirty. Hmm. And, you know, but then again, but Hawk was bucking the system, you know, he, and I try to tell Hawk, listen, man, you work for 3M or Honeywell or any of those companies, you got rules and regulations you got to abide by, but Hawk just didn't want to do it. He goes, man, this guy's screwing us on pay animal. I'm sick of this crap. And then finally, when the straw broke the camel's back, was in SummerSlam '92, and you know at Wembley Stadium, Hawk flipped out. Right.